Alright, so today I wanted to do a quick comparison of the Dell XPS 9300 13-inch Ultrabook with the updated 2020 MacBook Pro with the new Magic Keyboard. Now specs-wise, my Dell has the i7 1065G7 10th generation Ice Lake CPU. It comes with 16GB of LPDDR4 RAM and it also has an upgradable 512GB M.2 PCIe SSD. Now the main selling point of this laptop is the 13.4 inch bezel-less infinity edge display. Now I have the Ultra HD Plus model with the 500 nit display touchscreen. Uh, and this is probably the main reason why I have kept this laptop to this date. Now in terms of the MacBook Pro, uh, the one that I purchased was in the actual fact the base model. So it comes with the older 8th generation i5 processor. I also upgraded the RAM. So it comes with usually 8 gigabytes of RAM in this model, but I, I upgraded it to the 16 gigabyte RAM model, and that's LPDDR3 RAM, not DDR4 RAM. Um, the base SSD is 256 gigabytes, and I also upgraded that to 512 gigabyte SSD on this model. By just looking at the specs, the Dell wins by a landslide. However, as you know from my previous review, uh, the user experience is the name of the game, and I wanted to delve into how each performed for my day-to-day -day task. So let's start off firstly with external build. Both have an aluminum unibody chassis, and the Dell is a wedge-shaped design. It's lighter than the MacBook weighing in at 1.25 kilos as opposed to 1.4 kilos, and it's also thinner at 1.48 centimeters as opposed to 1.56 centimeters. Now both still maintain a similar level of solidness and durability, but I'm not game enough to jerry-rig test these two beautiful devices because I would probably still put my money on the MacBook winning given how it feels. In saying that, I did knock the Dell XPS on a metal bed frame the other day, and whilst the blue paint from the bed did chip off, my Dell was left unscathed. Looking at the bottom, Dell has one exhaust vent that runs the width of the laptop and two bottom firing speakers, whereas the MacBook Pro itself has a single exhaust vent along its width. In terms of overall look, I would say both are incredibly good looking, um, but if I were to pick a winner, it would be the Dell. It just has that perfect balance of portability and external build quality. Now, port selection wise, the base model MacBook Pro has only two USB-C Thunderport ports and they're both on the left hand side. Um, it also has a right sided headphone jack, whereas the XPS has what I think is a better selection of ports. It has those two USB-C Thunderbolt ports, but on the opposite sides of each other. And this offers a huge advantage with cable management as you don't have to use your power cable behind the laptop in some situations, unlike the base model Mac. Note that the high-end 13-inch model of the MacBook Pro has four USB-C Thunderbolt ports and that leaves the ability to actually be able to plug into a USB-C charging cable on either sides. This Dell laptop has also a micro SD card slot. Uh, it's on the left-hand side and it offers me particularly a huge advantage as I use micro SD for my content creation. It allows my workflow to be a little bit more smoother and I don't have to fiddle around with unnecessary cables. So let's talk about keyboard. The XPS has had a dramatic improvement in this department. Uh, the keyboard is probably on par with that of the MacBook and that's saying a lot. It has an equally excellent layout that has done away with that dedicated page up and page down keys that I would often press when using the left and right arrow keys. It also has significantly larger keycaps compared to the previous XPS models. Um, the travel was ever so slightly deeper than that of the MacBook Pro, uh, and I feel personally that it's more comfortable to use and to type on. Uh, but in saying that, the MacBook has uh, more advantages when it comes to adjusting the backlight of the keyboard um, using the touch bar, which I am impartial to. Um, oh, and it, it also tends to pick up less grind on the Dell compared to the MacBook. So when you're using the MacBook, uh, for some reason, the oil tends to kind of lie on those keys a little bit more heavily as that of on the Dell. The matte finish on the Dell is a bit better and I feel like the texture is more for my liking. Um, try out in store, see what you think. Um, for me, I would personally pick the Dells over that of the MacBook in terms of keyboard. Now the trackpad, uh, this is a more difficult decision as both have very excellent trackpads. The Dell has substantially increased the size of the trackpad compared to its predecessors. 
whilst it's not as big as the Mac, it's more than sufficient for everyday use. Um, I find it has a more satisfying click that feels like there's more travel and tactility when you press down, unlike the MacBook Pro, which has a, tine, a finer sensation when clicking, uh, and that's thanks to force touch. Now, this obviously means when you click down on the MacBook trackpad, you can do so anywhere along that trackpad. But I never found I was ever wanting to click all the way right up to the top borders of the trackpad, and for that reason, I don't think that's a huge advantage. What I do think is a huge advantage is that with macOS, um, they've managed to be able to fine tune the trackpad so much that gesture navigation just feels so fluid uh, using macOS as opposed to Dell and Windows um, precision drivers. So uh, if I were to pick between the two, I would still pick Mac as the winner for this um, category. Now, let's talk about the screen. It's an all important topic and I think it's a hard one to pick apart from, but I absolutely adore the display on the Dell. Like the MacBook Pro, it has upgraded to the 16 by 10 aspect ratio. Uh, and unlike the Apple laptops though, Dell has shrunk the bezels to minuscule sizes. The end result is that it looks absolutely phenomenal. It offers both an immersive and productive experience given extra vertical space for your Word documents and your Excel spreadsheets. In addition, that 4K resolution, it manages to make the image tack sharp and finally, the touchscreen adds more flexibility as opposed to that non-touch display of the MacBook. Um, I also think that the brightness on the Dell is slightly better than that of the MacBook, but um, I might be just picking at straws there. The MacBook Pro, though, is nothing to scoff at. Um, yes, it doesn't have touchscreen capabilities, and yes, those bezels are on the THICC side, but it has one outstanding feature, I think, over that of the Dell, and that is a balanced resolution. What I mean by that is that the native resolution of 2560 times 1600 pixels on the MacBook Pro is just the perfect balance between screen sharpness and battery life. I wish that Dell, and in fact, all manufacturers in the Windows space, make their devices so that the screen resolution is that of the MacBooks, because really no one needs a 4K display on a 13 inch um, screen like it just makes more sense and when you throw in a slightly better color performance out of the box it makes deciding between the MacBook Pro and the Dell XPS a little bit difficult um, but if I were to judge it purely on screen and not the impact that screen has on battery life then I would still pick the Dell just because it looks so good and it looks so impressive speaking of battery life the MacBook performed unsurprisingly overall better than that of the Dell. It had less battery drain whilst in sleep mode. For some reason, as with most Windows laptops, the Dell was draining about 4% of its battery life whilst asleep for about a period of an hour, as opposed to the MacBook Pro, which just didn't drain at all during that period of testing. When looping a continuous video on YouTube for an hour with the speakers on and at 50% of brightness, the Dell lost approximately 25% of its battery life, whilst the MacBook Pro only lost about 15%. Windows does have options to undervolt, um, but I find that when I did it on the Dell, it would become more unreliable, I would get more B-sods, and it wouldn't really work well with my eGPU. For these reasons, um, if you're looking for better battery life, consider the Dell, I mean, consider the Mac, but also the fact that the Dell offers a 1080p version with substantially better battery life that would outperform the MacBook Pro. Now, moving on to biometrics and the webcam. The Dell has managed to squeeze in Windows IR camera sensors into its minuscule top bezel. And that's fantastic for the reason that it offers both the flexibility of a fingerprint scanner and a facial recognition software, but I often find that I run into issues when I put the laptop to sleep. Um, once upon awakening, um, the laptop doesn't recognize my face or it doesn't register with the fingerprint scanner. And I think it may be due to driver compatibility issues. I would often have to either restart the laptop or reset the devices in the device manager. When comparing it to the MacBook, the MacBook um, has the Apple ID fingerprint scanner that acts much more reliably. Um, it won't ever not register my fingerprint. And it's for that reason that I still think that in terms of biometrics, the MacBook is slightly better. In terms of speakers, Dell has really improved their speaker quality this year. It's definitely the best 13 inch XPS laptop in terms of sound compared to its predecessors. However, 
the MacBook Pro speakers are no easy fit to um, beat. Even on the base model has better sound quality in the respect that it sounds more fuller. Um, there's richer mids and bass. In addition, I found that sometimes with the higher frequencies, the Dell chassis would vibrate or make some slight jittery sounds um, and the MacBook Pro doesn't do this. So add on the fact that the MacBook Pro speakers are upward facing, um, it means that the MacBook is better in this department. Although I'm still happy that Dell has significantly improved on their speaker quality. I don't think you would be disappointed in either. So let's talk about performance and it goes without saying that if you are after a decent gaming performance, it's unlikely that you would obtain that from either of these laptops. However, Windows does offer the ability to play a variety of AAA titles and particularly true when you attach an eGPU to the Dell. And if you're curious as to how this works and how the performance is when you add on an eGPU, do check out my other video. I've linked it down below in the descriptions. Although the MacBook Pro in terms of its base model is still equipped with that older 8th gen CPU as opposed to the newer 10th generation CPU of the XPS, it still holds its own in raw performance. So when we're looking at the Geekbench uh, test, it reveals that the MacBook comes very close to that of the XPS in single core testing and actually narrowly edges it in multi-core performance. When you switch over to battery life, things get a little bit even more interesting. The Dell actually suffers from a dramatic reduction in its performance capabilities, probably as a result of it trying to save on battery life. And this allows the MacBook Pro to inch ahead again, despite the fact that it has an older generation processor. The disadvantages of this 8th gen processor, of course, is that it has the older Intel HD graphics um, and it doesn't have this new integrated Iris Plus graphics of the 10th generation um, Intel processors. So when we look at the OpenCL scores, you'll notice that the MacBook Pro is performing about 30% less than that of the Dell XPS. Although, once again, when we switch over to battery life, the Dell just falls flat. In terms of hard drives, both the MacBook and XPS hold up well against each other. It should be noted that Dell has one massive advantage though, um, and that is the fact that it has expandable storage. So you can swap out the M.2 SSD, which is a massive saving grace, particularly if you opt for a lower end Dell XPS model, because that usually comes with only 256 gigabyte uh, SSD, and you can upgrade it then to maybe a one terabyte M.2 if you're feeling like you want to upgrade it yourself and save a little bit of money on the side. Fan noise is particularly prominent on the MacBook Pro, um, when you're really pushing it, whereas the Dell is much quieter. One of the main gripes I have with Dell and Windows laptop is generally they, due to the nature of Windows laptops, they just don't offer that same level of optimization that MacBooks have. You see it quite clearly in a couple of different things. For example, the performance in battery life, and you may say, yes, but those were you know, benchmark tests, they're not reflective of real world performance. Well, I've actually found that on battery life, sometimes my Dell XPS lags heaps. And that might have to be something to do with UI optimization. And this is another department where I think Dell and Windows generally falls flat when compared to that of Mac and Mac OS. It doesn't have that same consistency, that same level of smoothness that, OS, that Mac OS has. Uh, and that in itself is also a bit of a downside. In addition, I came across way too many bugs in Windows as well, and I mentioned this in my review. Things like Windows Hello just not working after waking from the laptop from sleep. Um, every now and then I would get, occasionally get a blue screen, and the Windows security for sometimes runs in the background after I wake the laptop from sleep, and it cranks the CPU usage up to 100% and it just makes the laptop so, so slow and it drains the battery life like crazy. Speaking of which, again, the battery life, I know I keep talking about this, but the drain when you're in sleep mode, it's really disappointing. And it, particularly if I'm opting for a 4K touch display and I need to savor every single percentage of battery life possible, um, the fact that it just drains when, you, when it's asleep is disappointing. Individually, these things may not be that big of a deal and can mostly be fixed either with some tinkering in the UI or restarting the laptop, but 
The thing is, I don't want to have to do that. Not when I'm paying the exorbitant prices that Dell charges here in Australia. So just to give you guys some context, at the moment, I can get my XPS model for $3,149. Now, I'm not saying that the MacBook is cheap by any means, but I can get my variant of the MacBook Pro at $2,419 using the education store. And now that's like a $800 reduction in price. And that's not even factoring in the fact that when I had bought the MacBook Pro, uh, Apple had not yet increased its charge for RAM upgrade. So I actually bought it for $100 cheaper and I was getting a smoother UI experience, better battery life, better speakers, and equally as good performance, even though it was a lesser generation uh, processor. Now, do bear in mind that means that I had less port selection as opposed to the Dell, and it was slightly more bulky, and of course I couldn't upgrade the SSD, but for that price difference, I would do away with those and pick the MacBook. Now, keep in mind as well that the high-end MacBook Pro with more ports with better speakers um, and with the 10th generation Intel processor, that's only $2,829 on the education store at Apple. And that's still cheaper than that of this Dell laptop. To be clear, I am not an Apple fan by any means, and I still keep on using my Dell for everyday use just because I do a bit of gaming and I'm used to the Windows OS. But the pricing scheme here in Australia particularly with Dell, it's just absolutely disgraceful. And I just can't recommend this laptop for friends and family that come to ask for my opinion. Oftentimes they already have a Mac and they're wondering whether to change over to Windows. Um, and they're looking at Dell and I'm saying, no, nah, don't do it. It's too expensive and it's not worth the hassle that you go through day to day. Of course, if you live elsewhere, if you live in the US, for example, or overseas where the price are more competitive at Dell's website, then your decision is gonna really weigh on what you use your laptop for. And this may be best whether you are uh, in the Apple ecosystem or that you really enjoy gaming and want to play AAA titles with an eGPU, um, that's going to weigh in on your decision. Anyway, thanks so much for watching guys. Do leave comments below and I'll be happy to reply to them. I hope to get more content out for you guys soon. So if you wanna see that, just hit the subscribe button and they'll notify you when my video's up. See ya.